Okay, welcome back, everybody. And uh, thank you to the wonderful team. That was uh, impressive. It might work for NASCAR. That was such a quick, quick, quick switch. Uh, welcome to the stage, Sean Ellingson. And uh, who here loves In-N-Out Burger? In-N-Out Burger? Well, Sean and his family have done an amazing job uh, growing and developing. I think you guys are now coming to Tennessee, isn't that right? That is right. We will we will be here in a couple, at least a couple more years. So it's awesome. Rob, you have some opening thoughts. Yeah, In and Out Burger. I, I think that's what was the manna in the scripture. Uh, Charlie, Charlie takes me. I call him. Uh, You've heard of Mr. Toad's Wild Rides. Uh, it's Charlie's Wild Rides. He'll call you out of the blue and say, hey, why don't you come with me, so-and-so. And he said, uh, come with me. I want to go to a Bible study um, with the owners of In-N-Out. And I said, okay, Charlie, we get there. And the two of us are in the car. And we pull up into this cul-de-sac with a very humble house, ranch style. And we didn't know what we were getting into. And we were the first to arrive. And the folks didn't really know who we were. And Sean and his wife hadn't shown up yet. And we sit down, and Sean's a teacher, and it was one of the most precious times, and Charlie and I loved it. And then Sean asked Charlie to share. And usually rich people get pitched, but the amazing thing is Sean and his wife asked Charlie to come because they love what he's doing and they believe in it. And then shortly after that, when we left, Charlie and I were moved, and we had the chance to spend time with you. And then just like our church, in and out came under fire by Governor Mussolini and the tyranny and, and uh, you, you refused to allow your employees to have to get a shot. And, and, they, and that ended up, yeah, amen. So I, I just, I teed that up to say thank you. And, and Charlie, we've been blessed by this man, amen. amen. Yeah. Yeah. Sean, honored to call you uh, a friend and a brother in Christ. Just what's on, what's on your heart? You know, I know that, you know, as a, as a pastor and, as a teacher, uh, there's some things you want to share with our audience here, but um, yeah, just share some thoughts and also tell us more about kind of the, the decision you made to stand up against the Leviathan that is known as the, the California government. Yeah, thank you uh, for having me here today, you guys, and um, thank you for allowing me to be up here. Um, I guess it has everything to, to do with our faith. Um, you know, I, I do follow politics I, in the same way I was always told not to. Um, at least be involved in mixed politics and faith. Um, and so that, I, I struggled with that as well. Um, but I, I do follow politics. I do believe in um, being aware of what's going on uh, culturally and socially. And, um, and so I caught wind of, of what you were doing. Um, I had seen you on Fox News a few times and um, it just really stood out at that point in my life uh, when when I came across you. Um, I was, you know, already pursuing my faith um, aside from my earlier life, and it was in alignment with with so many different values that I hold on to now, uh, especially bringing unity to, to the body of Christ. And so um, there was this boldness and this this courage that that was just on fire inside of you. And I admired that, um, and, I, and I really felt, and Lindsay, my wife and I both felt that um, we needed to stand behind you, uh, stand with you, and um, try to bring this awareness to the rest of the body of Christ. So, yeah, go ahead. No, thank you. And just that, talk about the prayer that you guys went through and the you know, decision, because running a big company and taking that stand, I mean, I, I just hope everyone understands that's, there, there's risk involved. So some of you right now are running a church, you say, oh, I'm going to lose tithes and offerings. Um, uh, how many people have heard that? They're, they're running one of the most incredible companies. They had to close stores, right? Yeah. You had to close in the Fisher's, Fish, Fisherman's Wharf store yep. because of principle for saying, you know what, we're not going to require our workers to take an mRNA gene altering shot. Tell us more about that. Yeah, so they were uh, trying to force us to, to, to go along with that. Um, I think because of our awareness of what had been going on up until that point, um, you know, circumventing all of the legal process for the development for vaccines uh, and just so many other things, you know, if, if I didn't have that awareness, if we didn't have that awareness, I don't know if we would have stood like we did. 
Um, my wife is an unbelievable warrior. And, you know, as this was happening, you know, we were trying to, trying to think about all the different avenues that this could go. And she, we're, we're, we're sitting there talking, um, and she's like, well, what if I get arrested? And, and, you know, she brought it up, but then she's like, I'll go to jail. <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, gosh, I got to take care of the kids. Like, I'm going to have... I mean, that was the reality of what really was going through my head. I'm like, oh, boy, school, I got to do all this stuff. But if that's really what you want to do, I'll, I'll support you. <laughs> and I'm not kidding, you guys. She really was willing to sacrifice that, even to that extent, to stand for... But like I said, it has everything to do with our faith. And uh, she just has this boldness inside of her. Um, and not everyone does, and I understand that. Um, but we need to find those people and we need to empower them. We need to, we need to equip these people so that they can take the leadership inside of the body of Christ. I think we're lacking that. I think we expect one person do, to do everything. And that's just not the case, and I, I know we're all aware of that. Beautiful, Rob. I, I wanted to comment that you were the largest corporation in California to stand against the tyranny. Mom and Pops did. In our county alone, 65% of our small businesses will never reopen because they were obliterated, and no large corporation stood, but in and out did. That empowered so many small businesses. That, that was a shock wave that, that turned the governor. And um, I don't think people realize how significant that was. And I, I, you, you talk so fondly of your wife. And, um, you know, the in and out franchise comes from a long Christian line. Many people don't know that the Harvest Crusades with Greg Laurie were funded um, by the, the, the family. And, um, and you and Lindsay together, um, as husband, and then, you know, her name operating... You have such a sweet relationship. Uh, can you share with the folks, with the intensity that you face, how your relationship is so critical, especially when you're up against it? And she's saying, now hey, I'm going to go to jail. And you're like, I'll watch the kids. Uh, <laughs> but, but there's more to it in the day in and day out operations. You're also, you take care of your employees. You, you follow a capitalistic Christian principle of providing for your employees, unlike any other business I know of in California. That's to be so commended. It's powerful. So please share with us how your relationship builds on that. Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, I, I recognize the position that she's in um, and the influence that she has and the impact that she has in so many different lives. Our associates, we have just around 35 plus thousand associates. And um, I've seen her pursue individuals um, wholeheartedly and relentlessly and I've seen lives changed because of her effort and so I, I've recognized coming into the relationship with my wife um, my role uh, and she, she's also you know brought brought that made sure I'm aware and reminds me uh, <laughs> to be the spiritual leader in our home and um, and so I, I understood, you know, especially coming into the relationship that, um, you know, I, I, I'll back up, I guess. I, I met her through uh, a dating app. And, um, yeah. <laughs> it, it's even better than that, but keep going. <laughs> so, um, you know, I grew up with not much. Um, and so coming into the relationship with her and, and then finding out who she was, um, and, and realizing what I was kind of walking into, um, I really wanted to make sure that God made it clear to me if I was supposed to pursue it or not. And um, she's, she had already been very strong in her faith. Um, she, you know, I started attending Bible study with her. Um, and so I kind of knew going into the relationship that I wasn't going to bring 
you know, I'm not going to pay the bills. I'm not going to get a job that's going to pay more than what she's bringing to the family. Um, and so I kind of recognized early on that I was supposed to be a spiritual leader in, in, in her life and in my kids' life, uh, lives and my, and my, my family. So, um, I do, I do what I can to, uh, under, you know, try to have understanding of where, what she needs to do and just support her. Now, Sean, talk about Army of Love. And also for those of you that know, you know, look carefully when you go to in and out you see little Bible verses on every single item. And I think that's just awesome, by the way. And so talk about Army of Love. This is one of the most amazing things. You've deployed significant resources towards finding the lost, helping the lost, but also towards ending child sex trafficking. Talk about yeah. the incredible efforts you're doing and how you really steward those resources okay. towards those. Um, let's see. Well, a few years before my wife and I met, I was serving in the United States Army. Um, I got out. My brother was, thank you. My brother was on, uh, on heroin, on the streets. Uh, right before I left the military, my other younger brother had passed away from uh, drugs. And so I, maybe it was an escape for me, but I left. I came back. Um, and within five months, I met Lindsay. Uh, earlier before that, while I was serving, she had a vision from God to start a ministry called the Army of Love. And so the 501c3 status didn't get approved for years. And then as soon as we met, a week after we got married, uh, they, they approved it. And so on top of the other signs that we had been asking for, this was kind of confirmation for us to pursue this ministry. Um, and so our vision is to unite the body of Christ, to set the captives free, and to um, just equip the, the body of Christ to, to heal brokenhearted and, and hurting people. Um, I believe in, you know, the material that we have is a discipleship program, an amazing discipleship program that we offer for free. We don't ask for anything from any churches. Uh, we're just here to support the body of Christ. We really want to see people experience what I experienced, what Lindsay has experienced, and so many of the people in this room have experienced, and that was an encounter with the, with the Lord. Um, I was molested when I was younger, and um, it really took uh, Lindsay pushing in and having, uh, wor you know, a, a word of knowledge from the Holy Spirit. And, and, and speaking into an area of my life that was dark and I, was a, and, and I wanted to pretend wasn't there. But she was relentless and she kept pushing in. And because of that, I faced the reality that, okay, this, is, this isn't her. This, this is somebody that knows who I am. Amen. Come on. Come on. And I'm telling you how, you know, how scared I was to acknowledge that. Um, but when I did, I told her, I, I just, I told her what happened. And I allowed the Lord to really just come into my life at that point. And I felt so singled out in this world by God. I felt so loved by God. And it, you know, after reading the, a lot of the Army of Love material that we have, it kind of just validated everything uh, about the process of my healing and the necessity of, of that healing in the body of Christ. I'm a, very, I'm a firm believer of transformational ministry and healing and counseling and allowing people to, to truth, truthfully, uh, truly feel the presence and the power and the love of God. Sean, that was precious. Sean, when I was a, a young youth pastor and I didn't know my elbow from my earlobe, we'd put on a youth event and a limited budget. I, I didn't have two nickels to rub together. I, on a whim, I wrote a letter to, I, I think it's uh, Lindsay's grandma, mm. Esther. And I asked if they would provide burgers for the, the youth event. And 
elderly handwriting. She wrote back, yes, dear, and she sent two burger trucks and took care of the lunch, and I, I was blown away, and um, I never had the privilege to meet her. I wrote her a thank you note, but I never had the privilege to thank her face to face, and when we went to that Bible study, I had already seen the video uh, of your wife where I am second, and how the, the company ended up in her hands and the struggle she went through with her dad. And, and I thought, this is an amazing human being that's got a lot on her shoulders. Um, and, and when Charlie and I walked in, I was looking forward to meeting her. And then I told her about her grandmother and, and how grateful I was. And then to see her, but then to meet you and to see the two of you together, understanding the power of Christ, regardless of all, because money is a, Money's an accelerant. It just makes you more of what you already are. But the two of you together have such a love for the Lord and you understand how to make a difference and you understand the value of this nation and the freedom that we have. I don't have a question. I said all of that from the bottom of my heart to say thank you to you and your wife and your entire organization. You've blessed us immeasurably. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. So, Sean, you have a beautiful thing you were talking about earlier about the Holy Spirit being the kind of the golden thread that binds everything together. Share that with us. Come on. You know, with the Army of Love, we've worked with different ministries and organizations and helped their staff and uh, leadership who sometimes feel like they can't talk about anything without jeopardizing their livelihoods, losing their positions, their jobs. Um, And so we've had, we've gone into these organizations, we've we've recognized that there's, you know, sometimes pastors that are put into some of the programs like this uh, that, we, that we deal with that are from all across the nation, from all different denominations. And my pastor, uh, who pastors over one of the specific organizations, um, has told me that it doesn't matter where they're from if we can find common ground in certain areas and the Holy Spirit will work like a golden thread and work his way in and around and navigate through all of those differences which, you know, can be so divisive, but, but the Holy Spirit can do it. And so um, I think that's, that's one thing too is just like for us is, is the power of the Holy Spirit. Like there's so many like crazy things going on in the world today. And it is so multifaceted. It's just so hard to keep track of everything, how to, you know, to know how to navigate it all. And I can, I'll tell you right now that everything in my life personally, um, I couldn't do without the leading and the guidance from the Holy Spirit. You know, Sean, I, I was just thinking here, I was running into some of you in the hallway and we did a whole show on this today. Just, it, it's tough to look at the current corporate landscape and it just hit me as you were talking, Sean, you know, Target and you know, all these companies one after the other. Isn't it refreshing to have a major company that actually stands for truth with leadership? I mean, it's just, it's, it's not all lost is what I'm getting at, right? It's, re- it's really something, Sean. And so talk about how the Holy Spirit plays into your leadership decisions and you and Lindsay. And w- what does that look like? What are the spiritual disciplines you include in, in, in high stakes decision making? Uh, well, we fast. We pray. Um, you know, we're actively involved with our church. Or we have a, a Monday night study group that we, that we lead that we've been a part of for many years now. And um, I, th- I think one of the most important things is recognizing the need for the body of Christ. Uh, just the eldership and the council um, and, the, and the unity is, is so important. Um, the Holy Spirit will reveal and lead us, um, but sometimes we're not so keen to following his lead or recognizing where he's leading us or what he's saying to us. And uh, for that, we need the rest of the body of Christ well, we're limited on time. I, I was going to point that, that, yeah, if you want to clap on that, I think we got time for clapping, that's for sure. Now, I've heard that it's said that uh, every in and out burger m- must uh, be located close enough to have fresh meat delivered. All ingredients have to be fresh. And, and I was, you know, that's, that's impressive. 
because it limits your distribution and, you know, everyone frees it. And it's a protection on that which goes into our body and you guys look for the freshest of ingredients. I say that because as you're describing how the Holy Spirit works in your life and, and spending time in the word of God, that, that that's got to be fresh manna. That's got to be a time with the Lord where he speaks to you through his word. And, um, and I think at least, you know, we can conclude with this. Uh, I, Charlie and I were both impressed with your, your teaching ability. And then we broke out. Remember, we broke out uh, men in one room, uh, women in another. I mean, if it's like if a Jewish wedding. Press, this is going to be <laughs> awful. But it was, it was, uh, it was. It, there was such a love for the Word of God, and um, I, I know that plays a huge role in your life. You, you've overcome a drug addiction, yes. um, molestation. The Bible says, "Be transformed by the renewing of your mind." How has the Word of God helped you through every step of that, especially when? I mean, I, I know what it's like to go through withdrawals. I know it's like to go through those times. What, how, how did God speak to you through his word? Share with some of these folks so that we can take that and give God the glory at the conclusion of our time together. Yeah, thank you. Um, well, I, I would say, and you shared the verse already, one of the, my, my life verses is Mark twelve thirty or Matthew 22, uh, 37, to love God with everything we have and to love our neighbor. And... Um, you know, for me, that's that's just the driving force on on staying on track. Is if those are the two ultimate commandments that fulfill everything else. It's um, you know I, I've got to stay on track with that. And um, the, you know, there's the Bible is full of other verses that help us day to day, right? And His Word is living, and and so you know, as I'm praying or reading and, and somebody comes on my mind as I'm reading something, I'm going to share that verse with them or whatever it is. Um, those are just kind of the things that help, you know, that, that navigate my life. Let's have him pray. Yeah, I was going to say, um, Sean, how can we pray for you? Because you're, you're, you're unique. Yeah. So tell us. It's like a unicorn, pray. really. Well, I know, but I just, you know what? <laughs> courage begets courage, right? And I can tell you this, I was just recently in Santa Barbara, and despite all, you can, you, at 9 p.m. at night, there is a line around the block to go to in and out Burger, I can tell you. And, I th and uh, come to Kentucky, is that what you said? You hear that? You, I, I think in and out has some big growth potential. Sean, really quick, and how can we pray for you as, uh, as we conclude here? Uh, just the protec protection over my family, my kids. Thank you. Thank you. Sean, you're a brother in Christ, and we are immensely blessed by your courage and your family's courage. Thank you. And Rob? Let me pray for him. Yes. Lord, thank you for Sean. Thank you for Lindsay. We do pray, pray for protection for them. We pray for wisdom. If any man lacks wisdom, all he need but do is ask of you. God, thank you for the way in which you've used them and the way in which you've blessed them. And Lord, he who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. They have refreshed us. We just pray double blessing on them. And God, thank you for this gathering. And and it's all about you. You are the guest of honor. And we thank you for your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Give it up for Sean.